All right, so now we're gonna look at a couple examples involving how we measure polymer crystallinity. And so the first one's gonna involve density. So here I, I, I replicated the formula for percent crystallinity so you don't have to go find it. And we're looking at polypropylene or PEP. Um, and the values given are the totally amorphous density of 0.841 and the totally crystalline density of 0.946, both of those in grams per centimeter cubed. And if we have a polymer, polypropylene polymer that is 0.9 exactly, I want you to calculate the percent crystallinity. So pretty simple calculation, but I want to see where you're at there. So if there's a quiz, go ahead and answer that. If not, just write this on a piece of paper, but tell me how much percent crystallinity we have for this polypropylene material with a density of 0.9 grams per centimeter cube. All right, so let's take a look at this. And this is more or less a plug and chug type of question. So we're gonna basically, th this first value is that for the amorphous, so row A. And then the second one is the totally crystalline, so row C. And then ours is row S. And so we're gonna plug those in. And once we plug in all of those values, so the 0 0.946, 0 0.9, uh, the 0.841 and etc. multiply that by 100 and we see that this polypropylene sample is 59.1 percent crystalline. So that tells us uh, about 60 percent is crystalline <coughs> excuse me and the rest about 40 percent or 41 percent is amorphous. So again that and that will change obviously the density but it will change other properties of that material. So it's important to know the amount of crystallinity. So again, it's a semi-crystalline polypropylene, and it has 59% crystalline phase. All right, so the next example I want you to look at um, is a couple of figures that we have here. Um, so we actually have two sets. So uh, polymers one through four, and then we have polymer blends six through eight. So two separate sets of polymers. Um, you can see here, this is XRD because we have intensity versus two theta. And you can see here it's heat capacity uh, versus temperature. So this is a DSC plot as it says in the caption. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I want you to do in each set um, is determine which is least crystalline uh, in both of these sets. So of these four, which is least crystalline of these four, which is least crystalline crystalline. So answer those if there's a quiz, and then if not, just do that on paper, and then come back and we will take a look. All right, so let's take a look at these. So each set, which is least crystalline. So again, this is uh, XRD plots. And again, here, the more and more defined peaks we have, the more and more crystalline it is. So we were looking for something that has really ill-defined peaks. And so if we look at these, these all look pretty uh, defined. Whereas this one, you can see kind of this broad shape and we have little peaks off of it. So it's still crystalline, but not very crystalline. So polymer four would be, uh, in this case, the, the least crystalline. Um, and then it'd be a little hard without determining the areas underneath the curves, which of these others would be um, next in line, but we know for sure that polymer four is the least crystalline. So let's go over to the DSC uh, set of materials then. And we see that we see the TG, right? So this change in slope for these down here. And we actually see the crystallization peak, which is that negative peak, but then we see the melting uh, in that case. And so we have uh, different melting curves here for the uh, eight, seven, and six. And so it's asking for which one is least crystalline again uh, in this case. And so in this case, uh, again, you're going to, the um, the area, if we go back to the last module, it's the area underneath the curve, right, relative to this 100%. And so the smaller the area, the, the least crystalline. So we're looking for the smallest area underneath that curve. And so again, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, I'm gonna say that the blend eight, which is the red curve, uh, is probably the least crystalline of the three. But again, if we really wanted to know, we would have to um, 
calculate the area underneath the curve to get the most accurate measurement there. So I'm going to go with eight. Um, if you happen to be able to get a different value, that is fine. But I'm going to say that that's the least crystalline of the three because of it has the lowest area relative to the three.